So, should we panic? The alarm doesn't work. There's kind of smoke everywhere. Which means we're all gonna die. Entryway. I don't know where I'm going. Do I come over here and talk to these guys? The door is locked, and I can hear shouting and crying. We're in the middle of some family drama, so there's no chance of them hearing me. That is the most contrived thing I have ever heard. I must sound the alarm. Yeah, where's the alarm though? I must sound the alarm. Yeah, but where's the alarm? I don't know where the alarm is. Oh, I have infant. Wait, why do I have? Why do I have the inventory? Also, how do I sound the alarm? There is nothing interesting here. The the alarm is that thing on the wall, right? Uh, saltpeter. No, I can't touch that. Should I shoot the thing? Nope. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. What, what is even happening right now? Locked. Hey, what are you waiting for to sound the alarm, Doctor? It's impossible. It's been damaged. I'll run and warn the director. No, Doctor. Our priority is to save O'Sullivan. Go ahead through the visitor's corridor and see if he answers your call. Very well. Take the keys. They're in our room. Take the keys in the room. Alright, well. Apparently the answer was to talk to him. Okay, well, here we go. Run, Watson, run. Run, Watson, run. Uh, keys. It doesn't work. What do you mean? Useless. This door is blocked by the timer, but not the one below. Give me the keys, quickly. Uh, no. How about you die down there? What are you even doing? Why would you give it? That was hard. Why I you? I the keys, doctor. Thank you. Why would you do that? Follow me, Watson. We must repair the alarm. Finally, there you are, Holmes. Holmes just. Oh, okay. So basically, Holmes deliberately let Hans out of prison. That was a setup. That must have been a setup. That must have been deliberate. I'm going to turn on the system. Watson, you make sure of the contact. I hope that this isn't dangerous. Oh, wait, wait, what? I have to. Wait a minute, I don't understand. How do I move forward? Wait a minute. I can't see where I move forward though. Wait a minute. WASD. So I can come here. How do I get into the next... Wait a minute. Oh, I just go straight through? Oh, I just go straight through. I see. It works. Perfect. It's open. Let's go down. Be careful. From what your colleague said, the flints are out. We are trained for this sort of situation. And we're armed. Come and help us, Watson. Everything is back to normal. Thank you for your help, gentlemen. It was a pleasure. But where is O'Sullivan? He's no longer here. He must have gone out through the visitor's entrance. Yes, and he must be pleased to have gotten out of the basement. Good. We must now check all the cells. It's the procedure in case of an alarm. We'll come and help you. You are evidently fond of wasting time, my dear fellow. Rejoin me at the reception when you've finished. Yeah, well, Hans is out. So, Sherlock Holmes let Hans out of prison. The, the grate is open. This is alarming. He's fine where he is, under the cover, still. 
No. How can he sleep with all this noise? I'll admit it's not normal. Perhaps the smoke has poisoned him. I had better take a look. Be careful, Doctor. He is dangerous. That's O'Sullivan. Take a look, Watson. Panic! O'Sullivan! It's impossible. He was with us only a few moments ago. Or else... Or else it wasn't O'Sullivan. My God, he's escaped. The Rat Killer has escaped. <laughs> yes, yes, the, he has. Yes, he has. And is that the toilet? That is gross. There's a bed, and then there's a hole in the corner, and there's a that that's disgusting. No toilet paper. Interesting. All right, well, there we go. We are pretty sure we deliberately let the rat killer out. I guess we'll find out how this furthers the story later on. Probably need him to find whoever it is who is making the poison. Because the rat, like, Hans, Hans is probably not going to let the other guy get away with it. Like, someone else is trying to make a better poison than him. So he's probably going to hunt them down and do something about it. And I guess we're going to follow him to find the, uh, the other person. Should we talk to Jenny? The door is locked, and I can hear... Alright, well, they're just gonna continue arguing. What a... what a hopeless prison. What a failure. Ah, Holmes, there you are. Hans has escaped. I fear that this inquiry is a bitter defeat for us. Not at all, my dear fellow. Quite the contrary. Follow me. Uh... Why the devil have you brought me behind the prison? We have an appointment, Watson. <laughs> okay. Alright, well, can I go this way? No. Yes? No. Uh, believe it or not, there is in fact an invisible wall. It's kind of tempting, isn't it, just to run out into London and ignore the game. There's a hole in the ground as well, it's a pretty massive hole. Alright. Look who is waiting for us. Shieldman, I'll go back and alert the guards. Calm down, he's harmless. But, but what is he doing here? Why hasn't he run away? Because I asked him not to. Are you telling me that you helped him to escape? Quite so, as he wouldn't have been able to do so alone. But how and why? He's a dangerous madman. Holmes, you've made me an accomplice in this escape. You owe me some explanation. And you will have them, but my priority for the moment is to remove our new friend to a safe place. I won't be long, but I must go alone. I'll rejoin you later. Just give me your next destination. Very well. I suppose you know what you're doing. How could you doubt it? <laughs> Here, take the notes. They will help you when you write up the account of our visit to Westgate. So, where do I find you? Alright, well, Hans is having a pretty good time. I guess we'll go to Kensington next. I thought next. of going to Kensington. To find the bishop's nephew. Very well. Wait for me there. Escape from Westgate Prison. Holmes' notes regarding the way that he helped Hans Schulman to escape from prison are so extraordinary that I would feel it better to transcribe word for word the conversation that we had afterwards regarding this matter. I felt the impatience in my friend's look, however he delayed relaying to me the details of his incredible achievement. He began by, pushed, by telling me about Hans Schielsman's fountain pen. Here's what he said. Oh, this is what he said. The key to the escape was actually Hans Schielsman's fountain pen. I discovered a note inside Schielsman's locker. I can quote it to you from memory. Whoever is smart enough to open this case should know that a couple of drops of my masterpiece are mixed together with the ink inside the pen's reservoir. If you're reading this note, it means that I'm in a tight spot, so understand that my special ink will temporarily destroy the will of anyone it touches. Therefore, you have 
a few precious seconds during which you can shape the subject's will. Okay, well, it's magic poison, isn't it? If you recognize my genius, use this knowledge to get me out of the embarrassing situation that I am undoubtedly in. Schumann had left this instrument for his future escape inside a case secured by a devious combination. That way he could ensure that none of the prison staff would find it, other than a well-informed friend. Understanding this, I decided to play along with him, but with a double game of my own. I would help him to escape, but I would also keep him under control by using his own creation on him. I allowed Schumann to commence the game by giving him his pen, and then I started to advance my pawns. My first move was to persuade the director that it was necessary to search the cell. I therefore passed the ball into Schumann's court by giving him the opportunity with Warden James. He did not waste it. He coated the bars of his cell with the poison ink, and Warden James, whose hands were contaminated, was under his control for a few seconds. He discreetly and quite simply ordered James to give him the keys. Now the ball was then back in my court. Now I had to find a way of neutralizing Warden O'Sullivan, who was to be the basement guard, as we discovered when we found Miss Patterson's duty sheet. I must admit that the young Warden helped me enormously by asking me to sign the prison visitor's book. Absorbed in the tale, I went over the chronology of the events in my mind. I remarked that Holmes had already signed the visitor's book before giving Shulman his pen. He replied in the most annoying, annoyed tone, Exactly, I anticipated it, and it was because of that that I managed to get a step ahead in my game with Schumann. I was leading the race, and all the while he believed it to be the other way around. Schumann did not suspect that I had already used his poison, and thought that O'Sullivan was, of O'Sullivan's being asleep was a godsend. He therefore was not suspicious about the letter of reference that he found inside the warden's pocket. Holmes then returned to the point at which he had broken from his tail to point out to me the lack of pertinence to my remark. Wait a minute. Is there... is there supposed to be a next page? It's just a colon and then it stops. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't know if that's supposed to be like that. I guess we're just gonna have to carry on later on. But then... I thought it only lasts for a few seconds. How is it that... How is it that Holmes still has Hans under his control after all this time? I thought it, I thought the, the mind control only lasts for a few seconds. Oh, wait, there's more. Escape from Westgate Prison continued. Okay, well, I see. But do not put the cart before the horse, Watson. Do let me continue. So by merely touching the fresh ink up on the page in the visitor's book, O'Sullivan was under my control. I suggested a state of advanced drowsiness, but ordered him not to do anything immediately, just sufficient for him to be unable to resist a siesta during his guard duty. Later, after the changing of the guard, Shilman used the keys to let himself out of the cell, he hit the sleeping O'Sullivan over the head and exchanged his prison uniform for the wardens. Then he created a smoke screen by using the ingredients that I had given to him. Sugar from Miss Pedersen's tea tray, brightened by carbonate of soda, potassium nitrate from the guard's room, and sulfur from a few matches. We never gave him this stuff. What, what the hell? He used the keys again to free the Flint brothers. The two ruffians leapt at each other's throats and made the very dickens of a noise. He had the diversion he needed to leave the high security area. And that is the moment where you entered the game, Watson. Thinking that you were helping O'Sullivan, you allowed Hans Schulman to open the corridor annexes bars by throwing him the keys. On my side, I opened the second lot by turning the alarm on again. In light of Holmes' explanation, I began to see my actions during this episode from quite another angle. I was troubled by the way that he had used me without any, I without my having any idea at the time of the duplicity of my actions. I interrupted his monologue to refer to the guards who had not realized what was happening and who were occupied with restraining the Flint brothers. Holmes continued, Exactly, so there was now only one obstacle in front of Shearman, Warden Brighton on the reception desk at the front of the building. I interrupted him again, but it was the director who summoned him so insistently, Holmes. You won't have me believe that he was an accomplice in this escape. Of course not. I provoked the director's rage towards Brighton. 
too impatient I could not stop myself from asking how, or the letter of course, I discovered that Ginny Patterson and Brighton were lovers, So, and I also knew that the director did not have any idea about their affair, and that he would surely fall into a foul rage if he found out. I asked him if that was also the reason why Miss Patterson had been summoned. Yes, she knew that I had opened her locket to find the guard duty list, and so she knew that I was aware of her affair with Brighton. She wanted to make sure that I would not say anything. I pointed out that it had been rather unfeeling on his part to have told the director everything, reminding him of his promise to the young woman. He denied it in a somewhat hypocritical manner. I did not say anything. I simply left the lover's letter inside the urgent correspondence box in the secretary's office, knowing that they would be delivered to him a few minutes later, thereby provoking his anger. Director... The director shouted at Broughton, who rushed off to the secretary's office. Shilman now had nothing to stand between him and the front door. Another question leapt into my mind, and not the least important one. Why did he not simply run away once he was outside? Why did he wait? I was not disappointed by my friend's answer. It was evident. It is evident, my dear Watson. If he did not run away, then it was only thanks that, to that aforementioned step ahead of which I told you. It gave me enough time to write the letter of recommendation for O'Sullivan with the poison pen. It was in the pocket of the uniform, and Schumann could not resist reading it when he found it, but what was written in the letter? Oh, I see. I see. Not very much, just congratulations on your escape. Wait for me here. <laughs> but I thought the thing only worked for a few seconds. I don't get it. I gaped at him, and that is how the first and only escape from the most inviolable prison in the kingdom came to pass. A scenario which without doubt will prove to be the focus of police college studies for a long time to come as one of the most extraordinary escapes in the history of modern prison. I mean... okay... But... What if he didn't read the letter? Anyway, well, it's, he, there you go. That's this Sherlock Holmes for you. Should I take a break now, or should I just keep going? I should take a break, just so that there's like a... We have a... arrived. The bishop's nephew lives here. Yes, he runs a ground floor room. All right, let me just take a break here. You control Sherlock Holmes. So, we just broke... But where did he go? I guess we just locked him up again somewhere. So we broke hands out of prison, and uh, when we come back, we try to find the bishop's nephew. All right. So I guess we're mostly spectating. Like we're not really solving any puzzles. We're just kind of watching Sherlock Holmes do all the work. All right. I'll see you all in the next video.